AI The Somnium Files, released on PC, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4, is one of the games in 2019 I lamented missing out on the most, but I had full intent on not letting this become a game that I simply never got around to. As a fan of the Danganronpa series, as well as the Zero Escape trilogy and Zanki Zero, I found myself firmly interested in the games Spike Chunsoft develops, and in this case, even localized and published themselves. More specifically, I found myself interested in the games related to the writing teams behind those titles. As the these are teams that I would follow no matter whose banner they developed and published under. It may have taken me longer than I would have liked to finally get around to playing this, but I have to say I'm damn glad I finally did, as this is not a game to miss. It's also a game that I feel would be an excellent first visual novel adventure game for those who never tried the genre before, especially where it's so quick to get itself moving. Where a game like Danganronpa 3 took nearly 10 hours to get to your first murder, AI The Somnium File starts at a high moment of interest, and that moment directly kickstarts the entire plot and the entire mystery that follows. So let's take a look now at how this epic mystery actually begins. We play as Detective Konami Date, a razor sharp detective with a highly intelligent AI named Aiba, short for AI Ball or Eyeball, implanted in his eye socket. Well, I say that he's razor sharp, but Date, all in good fun, is really about as dumb as he is intelligent. Who are you? My name is Konami Date. I work as a special agent for the investigation squad Abyss at MPD. And this plays into one of the things that I love most about this game's writing. Not to sidetrack myself already, but for as serious and dark as the subject matter can be in AI The Somnium Files, it never takes itself too serious, granting itself the freedom to just tell any and every joke it can along the way. The sense of humor in this game is frankly something to be cherished, and no joke is off limits. And I don't mean that in the way that maybe some jokes are edgy or toe a line of being offensive and they're just not afraid to tell it, but more so that some jokes are so stupid they could hardly classify as a joke at all and they include it in the game anyway. For what it's worth, that's the kind of humor, if we can even call it that, that I regularly engage in in my everyday life. It doesn't have to make sense or even be really relevant to anything. The humor to me is in the sheer stupidity of it all and it's nice to see characters that I can relate to in that sense. Like. AI the Somnium Files? More like Hungry Guy the Sodium Piles, am I right? Jesus Christ, 90%! That's a lot of freaking salt. But it's not like every joke is there just to be dumb. There's some good recurring bits throughout the game, like how somehow porno always seems to save the day. Date, a porno mag at your feet. What? Oh, there's also some good visual humor, not just in character reactions, but from the seemingly so improbable, it should be impossible ways in which action set pieces can unfold. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here. When we begin, Date arrives on scene to a grisly murder at a year since abandoned and derelict amusement park. Here, we have a victim, roped to one of the many horses of a carousel, with her eyeball gouged out. Or, as I wrote in my notes early on, uh, Date investigates eyeless carnival attendee. So my notes aren't always that detailed. Date, using good old fashioned detective work, in this case that would be us moving a reticle around and clicking on things, and with the help of Aiba, finds what evidence he can at the scene of the crime. But this only uncovers so much, so he turns now to Aiba's x-ray function and discovers somebody new hiding at the scene of the crime. Inside the column of this carousel, a young girl named Mizuki, Date's adopted daughter, sits paralyzed in shock, gripping the bloody ice pick that was used to remove the victim's eye her mother's eye. Immediately this story is already rolling, the characters are established, the mystery is established, and the inter-character conflicts and relationships are established as well. This is all in the first 20 minutes of the game, and it's safe to say that things only get more insane and more intense from here on out. Though not too fast, the bodies do start piling up, each with a matching MO of the victims missing an eyeball. Not wanting to believe Mizuki is responsible, the investigation gets underway, and the hunt for the real murderer and the proof of her innocence begins. As the corpses come in, questions follow suit, and a striking similarity to an old case known as the Cyclops Killer begins to reveal itself. The case of the Cyclops Killer is one in particular that Date's boss, 
boss seems hesitant to divulge information on. She insists that it's not relevant to the current killings. That the case of the Cyclops killer was closed and that investigating it further is a waste of time. Yet, the similarities cannot be denied or ignored. So, with a limited framework of information, Dante finds himself sinking deeper and deeper into the sea of questions that often seem to appear completely and logically inconsistent and impossible. But therein lies one of the core pillars of AI the Somnium Files. Nothing is ever quite as it seems. AI the Somnium Files has an incredible ability to hide truths and mysteries directly under your nose, without you, the player, ever being able to tell the truth you're seeing before it's revealed to Date. This comes into play in one of Date's most useful tools during an investigation, sinking. See, Date and Boss belong to an organization, or rather a branch of an organization known as Abyss, the Advanced Brain Investigation Squad. Though their office gives off vibes like that of Mulder and Scully's from the X-Files, a department their higher-ups would prefer to pretend doesn't exist, they are granted access to cutting-edge technology that can reshape the world of criminal investigation efforts if used correctly. This technology, this sync machine, does exactly what you'd expect it to, given it's found in a department for advanced brain investigation. Essentially, it allows the sinker, in this case Date, to enter the mind of another person and explore their somnium, basically the inner recesses of their mind, wherein he can find the answers they have hidden away that at times maybe not even they know about. This is where the bulk of the gameplay happens, so we might as well hit on that now. Inside the somnium, you walk around in a 3D space looking for interact points. Everybody's somnium is different and reflects the thing in their life, the things that weigh heaviest on their mind. Since most people don't have a one-track mind, they certainly do not have a one-track subconscious. So many things from their life clash together in this one mess of an area, and really, it's just an awesome sight to behold. The unique designs of each zone give a great insight into who these characters are behind the veil. Like Iris's Somnium being a Minecraft-like world based on the in-game video game known as Shovel Forge, a game she has grown quite an addiction to. Other Somniums, such as that of Sosajima's, looks more grounded, but still twisted like an abstract painting, and you can read into the meaning of that one however you would like. Time in the Somniums does not flow like time in the real world. It only progresses at a normal rate while moving. Because of how syncing works as well, your time in the Somnium is limited to six real world minutes. After that, the sinker must evacuate or the consequences to their mind will be severe. When you interact with things in the Somnium, you are given up to four choices of what you would like to do with that thing. Each choice will eat up time. And so it becomes not so much a puzzle of what you need to do to exit a Somnium, as this is a dream, dream logic applies, so you'll mostly just be clicking at random to progress and just seeing what happens, but more so this becomes a puzzle of how to get to your answers within the time limit. This is where timies come into play. Every action performed in the Somnium eats up time, but most actions also grant you a timey, which allows you to manipulate the amount of time it takes to perform an action. Sometimes that means adding a one-tenth multiplier to an action, or simply dropping the time to an indicated time. The further into the game you get, the more these timies need to be used with strategy. Not all timies are good, either. Some will increase the time of your next action by 2, 5, or 10 times the required time. When stuck with something like a 10 times multiplier, it's worth hunting down an action that maybe only takes 1-3 to three seconds to perform and just performing it, thusly getting that negative timey out of your taskbar and saving you more time down the line. Outside of this and the aforementioned investigations, there isn't much in the way of gameplay. You mostly just talk to people, selecting responses and questions from a loadout of choices. You know, basic detective stuff, asking the tough questions. You think it's true that a Tanuki's ball sack can stretch up to 10 square feet? You do get the opportunity to properly interrogate and cross-examine some people of interest and present them with evidence and statements to refute their claims, but these moments are usually pretty short and are few and far between. I guess during some of the more action-oriented parts of the story, you get little quick-time events as well, which are fun simply because of the actions they end up playing out, but they don't offer much in the way of actual player engagement. I will say I was a bit let down by the Somniums themselves, not really having much logic puzzles or riddles to speak of, choosing instead 
said to be a game about time management, but the Somniums did offer a puzzle in a narrative sense, in simply just puzzling out the truth as revealed through these bizarre locations. In Somniums, however, you don't just find truths, but a new mystery will begin to present itself. As Date sees a person's memories unfold like history being told right before his eyes, he has the ability to alter the course of events in their recollection, and in doing this, it appears things begin to change in the real world. Now the question begins as to whether or not the real world can actually be altered, as if traveling to different parallel dimensions to find a brighter future, or if this is just another of many truth concealing veils that needs to be lifted. So AI does an incredible job weaving its mystery as well as weaving new mysteries contained within and around it. It's all brought to life wonderfully through its incredible characters, its non-linear flowchart-based progression system, as well as some incredible writing and themes. So let's take a look at all of that now. The flowchart system here is a bit of a staple for the writing team at this point, and primarily the lead writer and director, Kotaro Uchikashi. The man, of course, responsible for this game's sister in style series, the Zero Escape Trilogy. Basically, while exploring people's somniums, there's often more than one direction you can go. Each direction uncovers unique information, and that unique information creates branching paths in the storyline. After exploring a branching path for long enough, you may come to one of three different points. A character ending, which will roll some credits, a bad ending resulting in a game over, or a route with a temporary lock on progression. Each one will stop your progress and require you to go back to any Somnium on the flowchart you haven't completed both ways. At this point, you change your route of investigation, uncover new information, and create a new branching path. As you exhaust your options, the earlier dead ends may also unlock. Though the locking points on the flowchart don't always seem to make the most sense, they are a bit of a necessity in making the story feasible. They basically exist to ensure that you see everything the story has to offer. If there were no locks and you ended up on the true route by luck your first time through, it's safe to assume that this game would leave you with more questions than you'd be happy with. Now, how do I segue from there? to talking about the writing in general, like I said I was going to in this part. I guess I could just try cutting the- We already discussed how wonderfully written and crafted the mystery was, and how much I loved the awful comedy in this game. But the highlights don't end there. AI The Somnium Files takes its amazing cast of characters, from the perverted and cool Detective Date, my favorite character Mizuki, his aggressive and strong adoptive daughter, the idol-obsessed disappointment Oda to his muse Aset, otherwise known as Iris, and his overly supportive mother Mayumi, always concerned her son may become a simp for Iris, and I just gotta say, I love her style. It takes all these characters and it crafts a strong, recurring theme through them. AI isn't just about solving a murder case. As corny as this might sound, it's just story about families. All sorts of different families. Whether blood related or not, it explores the ties that bind these people together, or at times, pushes them apart. It explores the complicated emotions of families struggling with their dedication to each other, and the realizations of just how dedicated to each other they really are, and what that means they'd be willing to do for each other. Basically, every important character in this game has a family directly woven into the overarching plot, and each of those families struggles with something that you'll have to gradually uncover as the game goes along, and it's this aspect that I'll remember the longest. The murder mystery is nothing short of amazing, but these families and their stories and their struggles hits me in a very personal way, and I think most people can find something to relate to and grab onto through these characters and their struggles. But then, this is something I often praise in games where it's a prominent central theme. AI explores this topic deeply and with enough varying stories within it that I find it very comparable to Yakuza 6, and that, to me, is a huge compliment. For that alone, I would recommend this game, but AI really is the full package. Incredible characters characters, an awe-inspiring mystery, and touching family themes and subplots to enrich the entire experience. So really, this game already has my recommendation. I mean, you guys have known that from the first 30 seconds of the video. But let's take a quick look at the technical aspects just so you guys know what to expect, and then we'll close out.
So, it shouldn't bear much mentioning, but this is a visual novel in 3D from a pretty small studio. Obviously, it's going to look a little budget around the edges. Most of the character designs, pewter withstanding, are pretty attractive, but the animations can often leave something to be desired, generally feeling rather stilted and awkward. Sometimes this enhances the comedy of it all, but not always at appropriate or intentional times. But then, we're not really playing visual novel adventure games like this for the looks anyway. We're mostly in this for the writing, and it effortlessly delivers in that department. The OST didn't immediately grab my ear, but it's not really a bad soundtrack either. The tracks have their desired intent, which is arguably the most important thing, making you feel more contemplative when the mood calls for it, intrigued or suspicious at other times, maybe goofy during others. A lot of the piano work here even reminds me of some good old George Duke tracks, and then others still further remind me of some of the pieces from Danganronpa or Virtue's Last Reward. The OST this time around was composed by Keisuke Ito, who I will say I'm not insanely familiar with, but he seemed to follow whatever instruction he was given pretty well. The OST just lacked memorable hooks, but was otherwise very fitting. Why do you ask? The two are very close for an idol and a fan. Ota is special. Date, what was that weird show you used to watch? The one with the girls running in slow motion. What was so good about it? Everything. A drug bottle that holds some kind of liquid. AI supports three written languages and two voice ones, those two voice ones being English and Japanese. I left the game in English this time and I was plenty pleased with it. The English cast done a great job in all instances outside of singing, which doesn't happen very much throughout the game, but when it does, it is the most tonally inconsistent thing in the game and I loved every second of it. I'd like to give special recognition to Karina Botcher. I really don't understand how to pronounce her last name, but her performance as Mizuki was fantastic. There was a wide breadth of emotion in her character and a lot of nuance behind her lines, and I feel Karina knocked every line out of the park. Truly a fantastic job in realizing the character and bringing it to life. But, but, I pretended not to notice. I didn't want to acknowledge it. I wanted to believe in daddy. Now, in terms of the game's performance, well, there wasn't anything that broke my experience here. <laughs> Visual novels are possibly the genre where you can get away with bad performance the most. Really, there wasn't even that much noteworthy, but there was a couple oddities here and there. For instance, this line read here didn't trigger or simply doesn't exist. I like her a lot. How much? About three universes worth. Aww. In some conversations, the characters will recall a past event and a video will load in reference to it, and sometimes those load times are especially long. It's very rare, but sometimes there will be discrepancies between the line read and the written dialogue as well. Wouldn't know nothing about that, cop. None of these things added up to much of an issue for comprehension, so I'm fine with just turning a blind eye to them. If I had any complaints at all, there was a couple conversations that more or less were putting me to sleep. Conversations that go over some pretty common phenomena like the Mandela effect in exhausting detail, just in case you're the one person who never heard of it before. In times like that, I'd rather they ask me if I knew what it was than skip the conversation if I explained that I did. But then, those conversations are a small slice of this otherwise fantastic 35 hour visual novel adventure game. But uh, if that's the extent of my complaints, you know I really didn't have many issues with this title at all. And so with that, I don't have anything more to say. AI The Somnium Files is a fantastic game and a fantastic mystery that I think everybody owes it to themselves to unravel. Outside of works from the same creators, you'll find very little else like it. And even among their works, this still stands out as being pretty fresh and unique. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. And that's all from me today. If you guys like the video, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you can. Links to all my socials and my Patreon support page are in the description below. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. You can drink your fancy Yales. You can drink them by the flagon. But you never find a brew so true like the one at Dungeon Dragon.